Wealthy people aren't as rare or different as people think. What really sets them apart isn't their job or their salary, it's how they think. Becoming wealthy isn't easy, but it's absolutely doable if you get your mindset right and manage your money well. By learning to think like the wealthy, you can improve your personal finances and start building lasting wealth. Here are a few ways the wealthy think differently. One, they focus on the long-term impact. The wealthy are great at seeing the big picture when it comes to their finances. They think about how a decision will affect them not just in a month's time, but five, 10, or even 20 years down the road. This helps them avoid the trap of instant gratification. For example, if you have a thousand bucks left over every month after paying your bills, a lot of people would be tempted to spend it. Spending those dollars might feel good in the moment, but it doesn't do much for your future. Now, imagine you invested that extra thousand bucks every month. The average stock market return is about 10% per year. With that return, after 30 years, you'd have almost $2 million. Only 360K of that is money you put in. The rest is your return on investment. They're masters of allowing money to work for them. Two, they consider ways to boost their earning potential. You don't need a massive salary to build wealth, but we won't lie. By raising your income, you have more money to save and invest. One way the wealthy do this is by developing multiple streams of income. In a study on self-made millionaires, Thomas Corley found that 65% had at least three sources of income before making their first million. Here's how to make this work for you. Figure out how you can build more income streams. For example, consider starting a freelance business with your existing skill set. Or you can save up money and purchase assets such as a house or land to rent out. Make the most of your income building years by looking for ways to increase and expand. Three. They prioritize owning assets and limiting liabilities. This one's pretty basic. Assets add value to your portfolio and liabilities take value away. So how do you know if something is an asset or a liability? Let's think about house. There are often arguments on if your primary residence is an asset or a liability, but here's how we look at it. The house itself is an asset. It generally increases your net worth over time. The mortgage is a liability because it's taking money out of your pocket. Now, if you rent out your home and the rent you collect is more than your mortgage payment, you're looking at an income-producing asset. The extra rent goes into your pocket, which adds value to your portfolio. On the flip side, things like cars are liabilities. You buy a car for a certain amount, its value typically goes down over time, and you still have to spend money maintaining it. Remember, assets are things that increase in value over time. They can be tangible like cash, a business, and dividends, or they can be intangible like royalties and patents. If your goal is to get wealthy, you need to limit your liabilities and invest more time and income into owning assets. Keep this in mind and you'll be on the right track to wealth. Four, they have a clear, detailed plan for their finances. Wealthy people are big on planning. 77% of them describe themselves as disciplined planners. When it comes to your money, Having a solid plan is key. Set both short-term and long-term goals. When you do this, you'll understand your priorities for the season you're in. For example, if you know you want to buy a house in two years and also want to send your kids to college or trade school, then take time to plan out what the next two, five, and 10 years look like. It's entirely possible to save up for your house in two years while not forgetting to invest for your kids' college education, even if it's 15 years in the future. Having a clear plan gives you something to strive for, helps you prioritize your money, and gives direction and focus to your goals. Five, they think big, but take small, manageable steps. People dream about making it big and becoming wealthy. How you approach this dream really matters. As in the previous step, you must plan the details of the life you want. Many people stumble because they think their dreams should happen all at once, but once you have a big picture plan, it's time to take action and start with realistic, achievable steps toward that big goal. This is important. To get wealthy, you need to be mentally ready first and believe wholeheartedly in your ability to achieve those big dreams. Once you have decided that, the second most important step is to give yourself smaller targets to get to your larger objective. Wanting to save 100,000 is an amazing goal and one that can certainly be done, but wanting to save 100K in two years when you make 60K a year is highly improbable. Instead, pushing that goal out four years with the smaller goal of saving 25K a year is much more manageable and gives you focus and direction. Dreaming big is encouraged, but you must have smaller, more tangible goals to get you there. Six, they step out of their comfort zone. 
When you read biographies and autobiographies of successful individuals, you'll often find a story or two about a time they weren't sure something would work out, but they went for it. They stepped out of their comfort zone, and the thing we now know them for was born. This was Phil Knight with Nike, Richard Branson with Virgin America, and Sarah Blakely with Spanx. You need to be bigger than your problems. That's the mentality you should adopt. Get out there, try new things, experiment, and do your research. Nobody gets wealthy by always staying in their comfort zone. There's always a chance of failure, but if you commit and work hard, there's a good chance you'll succeed. You have to be willing to make informed decisions and take calculated risks. If one business venture fails, learn from it and use that knowledge to your advantage in the next. Most everyone fails in business at some point. The difference is in how you handle those failures. It sounds cliche, but it's true. The wealthy learn from their mistakes and find ways to make the next thing work. Seven, they invest in themselves. Wealth is built on the value you provide. Wealthy people understand this concept very well. A study by Ramsey Solutions found that 88% of millionaires have developed some kind of advanced skill, and it shows that continuous self-improvement is a common trait among the wealthy. Use your time and money to improve your knowledge and skills. Make yourself more valuable by gaining new certifications or degrees. Learning a new skill might cost money up front, but it can significantly boost your knowledge and help you land higher paying jobs or advance in your career. You could take online courses in areas that interest you. Websites like Coursera, Udemy, and even YouTube offer a wide range of courses that can help you gain new skills. Reading is another powerful way. The wealthy make it a habit to read daily. Books on personal development, finance, and industry-specific topics provide valuable insights and knowledge. Networking is also a form of self-improvement. Building a strong professional network can open up new opportunities and provide support and guidance. Attend industry conferences, join professional associations, or even connect with people to grow your personal network. Eight, they understand that building wealth takes time. Building wealth doesn't happen overnight for most people. It's a gradual process. While everyone loves the idea of quick success, becoming wealthy usually takes years of disciplined habits. Those who are already wealthy or on their way there understand this well. You have to stick to basic financial principles year after year. Spend less than you earn, save and invest a portion of your income, avoid high interest debt, invest wisely in assets to help grow your money. The trouble often comes when people look for shortcuts like putting all their money into high risk investments, but these things often backfire and cost more in the long run. Discipline and consistency must become good friends to you. Plan and have goals that have long-term approach to what you want out of life. Then invest in the greatest asset of all, yourself, to give you the best shot of achieving your goals. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you learned something new today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend. We'll see you in the next one.